Uh, hello, my name is Igor Dvorkin. I am a historical scholar from Kharkiv, Ukraine. I work at National Technical University, Kharkiv Polytechnic Institute. I am an associate professor of Department of Ukrainian Studies, Cultural Studies and History of Science. In 2005, I graduated from History Department of Vasil Karazin Kharkiv National University. In 2005-2008, I was a postgraduate student at the Department of Political History of Kharkiv Polytechnic Institute. In 2009, I defended PhD thesis on Ukrainian museums in the 19th and early 20th century. Uh, since 2008, I've been working at the Kharkiv Technical uh, National Technical University, Kharkiv Polytechnic Institute. In 2001, I became a co-founder and member of NGO's Inter-Ethnic Relations Research in Eastern Europe. My uh, research interests are historical museum studies, nation building process, inter-ethnic relations, and so on. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how the current situation has affected me, my family, and the work of my university. My hometown, Kharkiv, is the second most popular city in Ukraine, a huge educational and scientific center, always filled with students from Ukraine and abroad. Due, due to the beginning of a full-scale war of Russia against Ukraine, Kharkiv became a city on the front line. In late February and March 2022, hundreds of thousands of Kharkiv residents were forced to flee their homes and move away from their city. Some of them went to countryside, some to the west and the center of Ukraine, and some abroad. At the same time, many people, including my colleague scientists, stay in Kharkiv. It was possible if they lived in safer areas or moved to them migrating inside uh, the city. They continue to work under the constant threat of shelling. The intensity of shelling is changing and now in early summer 2022 became slightly less. My family and I were first to leave the city in March 2022. In the middle of the city, my apartment was completely destroyed by, by an explosion and fire probably due to a rocket. Almost all of our property, not to mention our own home, was destroyed. It was a shocking situation. Now, now we are in the west of Ukraine and I like and I, like many of my colleagues from Kharkiv, have the opportunity to continue working at the university. For several years now, after the beginning of coronavirus pandemic, NTU HPE has been actively and very successfully using online platforms mm -hmm. in the educational process. In the current situation, the university has opportunities to continue fruitful work. The, the university has an excellent corporate system, thanks to which currently Ukrainian and foreign students continue their studies regardless of, the, of where they are now. Learning online helps teachers, students, and graduate students feel part of the community, even in such difficult circumstances. Separately, I want to say about the professors and graduate students of the Department of Ukrainian Studies, Cultural Studies, and History of Science. Our department, regardless of where they, and where uh, we are, now, in Kharkiv, other regions of Ukraine or abroad continue to work as much as possible. Professors have taken part in various actual, actual scientific and educational projects and trying to continue their own scientific work. As I said above, I have been a member of the Kharkiv Regional Non-Government Organization Center for Inter-Ethnic Relations Research in Eastern Europe since 2011. It was founded by a group of young researchers. For next year, the center holds conferences, roundtables, seminars, and public discussion, participate in exhibitions, competitions, and educational projects. 
that uh, interested scientists and public figures from Ukraine and other countries. The center main focus is on the problems of inter-ethnic relations in the history of Ukraine. World War II, research and uh, pre uh, preservation of historical and cultural heritage. The center is currently on pause, pause but our work will be resumed if possible. Uh, to date, uh, I continue some of my work researching contemporary Ukrainian historiographical discourse. In particular, I study receptions of the Second World War and the Holocaust in Ukraine school and university education uh, the, uh, before and after Euromaidan. The event of in Ukraine of 2014 called Euromaidan strongly affected the humanitarian sphere in Ukraine. Textbooks and educational programs on the history of Ukraine in many aspects reflect the changes that have taken place in the perception of historical events after Euromaidan. Uh, this project aims to analyze the parts of school and university textbooks devoted to the Second World War from two generations, before and after 2014. Perhaps the greatest changes have taken in the interpretation of the events of World War II. Among the main topics related to the war are the Soviet Nazi non-aggression pact of 1939, in inclusion of part of Ukrainian lands in the USSR in 1939-1940, a Soviet Nazi military confrontation on the territory of Ukraine, occupation regime, resistance movement, etc. In the latest textbooks, the pattern has barely changed, but the but the new aspects of old problems and new topics, which were previously ignored or left without evaluate judgment, have been added. Currently, Ukraine is in the process of making changes to existing historical educational program. Of course, this was most affected by the contemporary war. Therefore, this project has prospects for further continuation. Next, I would like to talk in more details about another project that I am implementing together with a team of friends and colleagues. It is a multimedia platform of memory on memory of the Second World War called Don't Forget Hockey. It is designed on the example of the city of Kharkiv to present the politics of culture of remembrance of the Second World War in Ukraine in its dynamics. The platform provided educational resources for school, scholars, educators, pupils and students researching and studying the culture of World War II remembrance, including modern memory politics and current memorial practice. Via an, an interactive map of Kharkiv, users can find marks of objects with general information about the specific monuments and its history. Monuments and other memory spaces of the Soviet and contemporary periods can be found already and will be added to the platform in future. During the Russian-Ukrainian war, because of the shelling of Kharkiv by Russian troops, some of these monuments were damaged. So the commemoration of the events of the war, which was reflected in particular in the erection of memorials and monuments in, is inextricably, inextricably linked with the prevalent official view of war. Soviet historiography used the term, the term the Great Patriotic War of the Soviet people of 1941-1945 to describe the events of the German-Soviet War. According to this approach, the victory in the war was achieved thanks, uh, thanks to the unity of the Communist Party and the Soviet people. In the post-Soviet Ukrainian narrative, the concept of the Great Patriotic War 1941-1945 continued to be used for a very long time, with change 
actions in honor of the feet of ordinary people, not the party. At the same time, the term World War II was used in parallel. In particular, the textbooks noted that in its first stage from September 1939 to June 1941, the USSR acted as an aggressor. After the Euromaidan, the team Great Patriotic War completely disappeared from textbook. Official rhetoric at the, uh, at the state level and legislation. The law on the uh, perpetuation of the victory over, over Nazism in World War II, 1939-1945, uh, uh, established, in addition to Victory Day, May 9, the Day of Remembrance and Reconciliation, which is celebrated annually on May 8. The symposium and rhetoric of remembrance are changing. Monuments of the Soviet period, mostly dedicated to the heroism and honoring of the memory of the Soviet victorious soldier and Soviet citizens, victims of the occupies, which is fully in line with the concept of the Great Patriotic War. Most of them appeared in the 1960s, 1980s. The most significant for Kharkiv are the Memorial Complex of Glory, 1977, and the Monument of the Liberation Warrior, 1981. Monuments to Soviet soldiers were often erected in landmarks associated with the liberation of the city or the burial of Soviet soldiers. Ukrainians, Ukraine's independence opened up new opportunities to perpetuate the memory, especially of war victims. Topics such as the Holocaust, the tragedy of Jewish people were largely silenced during the Soviet era. Therefore, even of monuments appeared at the sites of the mass shooting of Jews, as in Babin Yar in Kiev in 1976. The, they contained references to Soviet citizens, victims of Nazi invaders, without mentioning that they were Jews. In, uh, the, in independent Ukraine, the construction of Holocaust memorials remains primarily initiated by NGOs. In Kharkiv, the most significant places of remembrance for the Holocaust are Drobetsky Yar and the site of the Jewish ghetto, and they were marked in the early 90s. Another tragedy, the murder of Polish officers captured at the beginning of World War II in September 1939 and uh, shot in April, May 1940, including Kharkiv, was also reflected in the urban state space. The commemoration of the victims of Soviet totalitarianism took place and is taking place at the state level with the participation of high-ranking officials of Ukraine and Poland. In 2000, a, a Ukrainian Polish memorial was uh, built at the burial site of the victims. Thus, in the urban space of Kharkiv, there are monuments dedicated to many aspects, aspects of the history of the Second World War. Don't forget Kharkiv collects and analyzes the history and his significance for the present. Today, the project has faced new challenges given the destruction of the city by Russian troops. In particular, monuments dedicated to another war, World War II, are being destroyed and damaged. This is the I want to end my presentation. I thank the University of Erfurt for such a wonderful opportunity for Ukrainian scientists. It is really very important for us to be visible to colleagues all over the world, especially now. Thank you.